Hello and welcome to the EFN Presents review of Season 4, Episode 10, Rainbow Falls. I am your host, Kenero, filling in for Ramble this wonderful evening here. I am also joined by Krypton Logic. Hello, guys. And Reldan. hey So, one of the things uh, we've been looking at so far this season has been a overarching theme of the rainbow power but one of the best things noticed with this episode as we've seen is the introduction of a background pony's name also known as both biceps and the return of derpy but we'll be getting into that in just a quick second so let's just get right on to it shall we sure let's all right so uh one of the key things with this episode that seemed to upset a lot of people and did raise a couple of questions was the decision of by the Wonderbolts to abandon their comrade in arms, Soren. How did you guys feel about this particular uh, scenario playing through? I definitely feel that the Wonderbolts over time have kind of declined in terms of role models. At the very beginning, you you know you kind of saw them from Rainbow Dash's perspective before she had really met them or gotten to know them, and you kind of saw them as like this larger than life team of like basically like super athletes it's it's i guess it's the way that you would view your favorite sports team or something along those lines but as you kind of get to know them between this and like wonderbolts academy they really come across as being you know not really good role models it, it you really realize that in a lot of ways rainbow dash is pretty much i mean she's the better pony in in just about every way she's actually i think she is better than her own role models and it, it'll be kind of interesting if at some point they address her realizing that. You know, yeah, I, I have to agree with you, too. It's, it's quite incredible because, you know, you see, if you take an example of yourself and, and your role models, usually, you know, you look up to them because they, they do great things that really push you and encourage you. And you have this sort of situation. And, you know, this isn't the first time uh, that the Wonder Bullets have, you know, really pushed Rainbow Dash to make, you know, harsh decisions, you know, looking back at a Wonder Bolt Academy. But it, it feels, you know, just very it's <laughs> disrespectful, you know, to, to Soren, someone who's been part of the team for so long. You know, imagine if you were part of the team and suddenly, you know, your team didn't want you and they didn't really want to tell you because they didn't want to hurt your feelings. So, you know, instead they just made up an excuse for that. And that's sort of the situation here you're learning. You're seeing, you know, seeing a real world example used in, in the terms of the cartoons. Well, I mean, the, the really sad part is that Soren doesn't even seem to be like surprised by it. It's just like, well, you know, that's just, I guess, the way it goes. Right. He's like, he expected it. He's like, well, I guess Rainbow Dash is a better flyer than me. Shucks. Yeah, and, you know, one of the biggest things that, you know, it, it could be a little bit because we've kind of compared the Wonderbolts to be like, hey, Equestria's Air Force. You know, you think it's possible, you know, it's possible Soren just had that mentality of, it is what it is. I guess they don't want me just because he's used to putting his team above himself, maybe. Mm hmm. And, and that shows right there, you know, in the scene when they're at the hospital with Rainbow Dash and Soren, and and he goes, you know, oh man, it's so nice that you have friends because nobody, everybody's too busy to come visit me. That's really sad. <laughs> That's sort of sad. Like poor Soren, you know. But I, you know, I, I haven't been in the army or the military, but I imagine it's the same scenario. You know, unfortunately, you have to worry about what you have to do, and you know, family comes later. <laughs> And to kind of piggyback off of that, you know, I, I've had four to five years experience in the fire department as well. And, you know, sure, when it comes down to training the, the, the people you're there with working with, they're like your brothers in arms or their family. But when you take those same brothers in arms and you go to tournaments and competitions, because, yeah, we do have such things, you kind of try putting people where they'll be the best. And unfortunately, if you're you're that man, that odd man out that, you know, unfortunately can't carry the team. then That odd pony in this situation. Yeah, that odd pony in this situation, then you kind of have to, you know, unfortunately sit on the sidelines and kind of be like, oh, well, shucks. Yeah, you have to put your, your best hope forward, so to say. Yeah, I mean, the Wonderbolts aren't, you know, the esteemed, prestigious flying group of all of Equestria because, you know, they dug down deep and, you know, let like the bulk biceps and the Fluttershies onto the team to be like, hey, you know, let's, you know, let's everyone, you know, feel good and, you know, it won't matter if we win or not. I mean, they, have a reputation and 
that's for being the absolute best. And I mean, that, that's kind of what they're going for in all situations. And I think everyone who's on that team understands that and goes out of their way to put that before any other consideration. Wait a second. Wait, what you said, you know, can't have flutter, the Fluttershies and the bulk biceps, but wait, wasn't bulk biceps in the training academy for the Wonderbolt? Mm-hmm. Well, he, he was, but I mean, I, I don't think he was probably going to, you know, make the team. Well, you know, well, at least he tried. So that's why he's helping out Ponyville now to, to get a part of the equestrian games. Yeah, and you piggyback on that. It's like Rainbow Dash is that type of character that, that she has that character, which is like, I want to be the best and I want to do this and this and this. But at the same time, you know, she's loyal to her friends. And we realize that later in the episode. Uh, that she's really loyal to her friends. But at the end of the day, you know, she wants to be the very best she can. And she doesn't want to be held back. Right. And as you said, you know, with Rainbow Dash, of course, we all know she is the element of loyalty. As, of course, we've seen this uh, archetype come forward several times in several past seasons and episodes. You know, having to make that harsh decision of having to choose between your friends and what you desire. We've seen this since the pilot episode, actually. You know, we've seen it with, uh, you know, Rainbow Dash, you know, having to choose between her friends and the Shadow Bolts, again, and Wonderbolt Academy of having to choose a way to walk away from what you desire for, for standing up for what's right. And in this case, you know, having to be there for your friends versus your idols. I think also it's like Rainbow Dash is the element of loyalty. She, she's loyal to others, but she holds loyalty in a very high esteem. And you can see that the Wonder Bolts are maybe loyal to the concept of being the best, but they're not really loyal to each other. I mean, the contrast between the treatment of Soren and just how much all of her friends and basically Ponyville in general kind of, you know, really got behind her to support her. It's I, I think from her point of view, like she wants to be loyal to the group that's going to be loyal back to her. It's for her, you know, loyalty is top priority. Like the loyalty that Rainbow Dash has is very different than, let's say, Spitfire has towards uh, her rest of her teammates. And that's made very clear in this episode. You know, we you saw it before, but now it's very crystal clear that, uh, you know, where loyalties stand with each other. And absolutely, because especially when you've held your idols in such high regard, you want to be a part of them. You want to be with them. You want to be there to win with them, so to speak, you know, is it worth the sacrifice to ditch those that helped you get there? I did essence, you know, bulk biceps and Fluttershy in this case. Correct. Right. Cause you know, at the end of the day, she wouldn't have made it to the, the tryout, the, the, uh, question games, uh, tryouts without the help of bull bicep or Fluttershy because there was no one else. Well, I mean, there, there was Derpy there. There's Derpy, but well, I don't, I don't know, actually. I don't know how that works. And then we move on to this, the, the scene with uh, Derpy just saying, well, you tried your best, but we're not going to make it. And she just gives you the shrug. You know, point being, she would have tried. <laughs> can, we get, can we just agree that that scene was spectacular? That shrug. Yep. No words were needed. We, we, I think we've, we've touched a, a little bit on, uh, obviously, the decision of loyalty. And I think we should get back to, to that in just a second, too. But... As far as Twilight Sparkle is concerned, a lot of people are saying that she wasn't as important in this episode, and I, I kind of disagree with that. I don't know about you guys. Well, okay. I, dis I agree and disagree, <laughs> and, and the way I feel is that she said just enough for Rainbow Dash to trigger actions of her own and be able to figure it out on her own. It wouldn't be fair, and, it, and, and Rainbow Dash wouldn't have learned a lesson had it been just Twilight telling her how to do it. Oh, here's what you need to do, Rainbow Dash. You should probably stick with Ball Biceps and Fluttershy because that's the right and loyal thing to do. That episode would have ended immediately and then we would have never had the rest of the story. But at the same time, Twilight was there to guide her in the right direction. I just feel like it felt forced. I felt like you didn't need Twilight to do that. Maybe Rainbow Dash could have figured it out by herself. This is where I disagree and agree with myself. I, I'm exactly there. I, I have the same view. It's like, it's like, I think Rainbow Dash would have come to that on her own. And I, I actually think that it would have been stronger for Rainbow Dash to have just basically come to that without needing to have, I don't know, Twilight just being kind of there to judge her disapprovingly. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I just don't feel like that added a lot to the episode. It's kind of like the, it, it felt almost like a first season episode where it's like you 
probably didn't really need Twilight there to get to the moral, but she's there anyways. You've yeah, the episodes have like the season the characters have developed and grown through four seasons and it feels like we're back to square one with like holding hands and the hands didn't need to be held. And that's where I kind of disagree with you guys. I, I actually felt that Twilight had a very important role on this, it, essentially to be the guide for her friends, because sometimes, you know, whether we like to admit it or, lo- or not, you know, sometimes we do stray from our, our path that, and that we're trying to head towards. And sometimes it takes a little bit of a wake up call from a friend of ours to say, hey, what are you doing? Wake up and smell the roses. You're messing up here. Well, I mean, did did uh, Rarity really need that to come to her epiphany in Rarity Takes Manhattan, though? I mean, I feel like Twilight just kind of, you know, stomped out of the room, but I don't feel like, you know, they had that same degree of handholding that uh, Rainbow Dash had in this episode. Plus, at the same time, we, we've also seen that the difference between, you know, obviously Rarity and Rainbow Dash is that well, Rainbow Dash can be a little bit stubborn compared to Rarity. Hard-headed? Exactly. So I think that's why she needed that extra push from Twilight Sparkle, which is why I, I kindly disagree. I guess the thing is, I mean, now, with, because of the way it ends up working out, it's like we really have no way of knowing whether she needed that push or not. But I mean, I guess that's a reasonable thing to disagree over is, has Rainbow Dash progressed as a character to the point that, you know, she understands these things and she can come to these decisions uh, really on her own? And that's very true. But just, just like any... Uh any character or or person for that matter sometimes we do have our our values you know held to a high standard and sometimes we 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 kind of forget when we're put into a situation where we have what we truly desire in front of us Mm -hmm. and i think that was the biggest thing there anyway going forward especially with the whole decision of of loyalty as we we talked about a little bit earlier like you said, you felt that this was going back to a season season one type explanation. But something I've that you know a lot of us have noticed, you know, with these past few episodes here in season four, is yes, you're you're having some of the characters go back to their base basic element, you know, whether it's generosity, uh, loyalty. But notice that each time they're going through that, it's not just them learning a lesson; it's everyone around them that's learning that lesson also compared to before. I, I would agree with that. It, it, it definitely, it, it shows growth among the characters just in general. And I mean, I think it re- what they're really trying to do in this season is show that these six elements really are the building blocks of friendship. So it's not just the case that each pony is bringing just one element and pretty much just, you know, their friendship is just built by each one of them just doing one thing. It really is that like friendship is kind of a quilt. It's, it's a mixture of all of those things put together. It's just those specific elements maybe express themselves slightly stronger in specific ponies, but that, you know, it really is key to the friendship between all of them that they all kind of have some of that quality. And, it, and most importantly, too, is, you know, not only do you have that quality and you see that those elements are the building blocks of friendship, not amongst themselves, not just amongst themselves, but amongst the other ponies that they come across. I mean, look at uh, Coco for that matter. If it wasn't for um, Rarity's generosity and, you know, actually Coco seeing what Rarity was being put through, I don't think Coco would have learned that it's possible to be in the fashion world and not just have to deal with people who are jerks to you. And maybe I'm explaining it a little bit wrong, but the base concept is there. And, and if you compare that to here in Rainbow Falls, you see that Rainbow Dash is having that choice of, you know, who should I be loyal to? But it, it later comes to the realization that the Wonder Bolt should have been loyal to their friend Soren and, and their teammate Soren. And I think that's where, where the season's going. Yeah, I completely wholeheartedly agree with that. And I think that we're going to continue to see each of the uh, elements portrayed in different episodes. And we're going to, you know, we've already had generosity. We've had loyalty. We're going to continue to see that. That's going to be a big growing point for season four, I think. I would ha- tend to agree because, like I said, you're, you're going through those motions of seeing the ponies that almost, in essence, reaffirm themselves as that element of harmony. Mm, all right. And, and not just reaffirming themselves, showing everyone else around them. Yep. I think we should get into a little bit more of not just the nitty gritty of the uh, episode, but I think some of the more 
notable parts of the episode, uh, obviously, that got a lot of our attention going. For example, uh, Derpy's return, which we mentioned a little bit ago. She's just so cute in absolutely everything she does. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's like during every scene that she's in, it's like, you know, they have all the other ponies, maybe they're front and center, but like, you're basically just watching like what Derpy's doing during that scene. It really was nice to see her return for season four, especially now, you know, and especially considering she hasn't been in 10 episodes before this. And it's really nice to see her uh, return. And I think she got uh, an outstanding, I don't know what the correct word here I want to use is, but I think that she really got a triumphant return. And she didn't get a chance to fly, unfortunately. But it's okay, because I think, you know, the fact that Derpy's here and she's here to stay is spectacular. And she's a fan favorite at the end of the day. And I think the way she plays her character is the way it should be. I think it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy just seeing her and having her just be part of the show. I'm really not that concerned over whether she ever has like speaking lines again or anything like that, because I don't think that was ever really the point of the character. I mean, to some degree, it's like there, there's just I, don't, I just don't see that there's really a need. No, and and you know my favorite scene of the whole of the whole sh- the the whole episode was the very end when they take the group photo and she just jumps in last minute and she's part of the family now and that's that feels really awesome it really does I I just feel bad for her because she came so close to being able to to uh, show her skills you know fly with the team and everything and we we still really I mean who knows maybe she secretly is like just as good as rainbow dash and you know we've just never seen it and she just never gets a chance to show that one day we'll see one day <laughs> one day when rainbow dash has another excuse as to why she can't fly <laughs> one day derpy will show us all now one of the other wonderful things here um with obviously derpy's return uh, we got to see Quite a couple background characters step forward into a supporting role, at least in this episode. You know, for example, we had um, Bulk Biceps, which had no name prior to this episode. Most people in the fandom in the community kind of just refer to him as Snowflake. Or if you know his real-life counterpart, Private Stampede. We, we also had, you know, Fleetfoot for the first time ever have a speaking role. Mm-hmm. It was really nice to have all the Wonderbolts now speaking. Or at least the three main ones. Exactly, and and then on top of that, we had, we did have a couple background characters, you know, return again, and then a couple speak for the first time. So that was actually a really really nice thing. Can I make a point that I really hope the cheerleading ponies return for the Equestria Games episode? Because them with Pinkie Pie and Twilight in that wig is just spectacular. Yeah, that, that was a pretty good joke that they they did with those those cheerleading ponies. They're just very. I don't know, they're just very chipper. It's like you, you see them and they're cheering and you just have to kind of smile. Speaking of cheerleading ponies, I mean, we did get to see something a little uh, a little interesting. We got to see uh, Princess Twilight in a uh, cheerleading outfit. You know, was this possibly a reference to uh, something else that uh, Tara Strong might have done? Oh, my. Hmm. Oh, that's right. She, she did dress up. What I forgot what convention it was for, but she dressed up and it looked very similar. Hmm. Uh, well, considering she did star in a uh, video game, uh, what was it called? Uh, Lollipop Chainsaw? There we go. That one, yes. I'm not familiar, so I'll let you that one. Take that one away. <laughs> oh, no, it, I, I think it's, you know, something that everyone's going to point out sooner or later if they haven't already. Yeah, I mean, this isn't the first time that they've slipped in a kind of uh, Twilight is voiced by Tara Strong, so some sort of reference to other work uh, Tara's done i mean there there was the joke about how uh she can't or she, she doesn't speak squirrel which is a reference back to her role as uh on the powerpuff girls where she she did speak to squirrels so it's it's kind of like a I, I guess it's kind of an inside joke uh to some degree but yeah i definitely think that there that probably had something to do with with how they portrayed that scene mm-hmm. in this episode yeah but I mean, I think uh, on, on the topic of the background ponies, though, I mean, I will say, I, mean, I, I mentioned this in, in my review of the episode, uh, the written one, that I guess my thing with the whole bulk biceps, you know, him, him stepping forward, having a more prominent role, is that I, I'm not entirely convinced that what they did with him in this episode is better than his kind of yeah stick that he that he did before. It's like, I, you don't really... They, they, they didn't really flesh the character out 
anymore. I mean, he's really nothing more than, or we know nothing more about him now than we did before. But at the same token, it's like, it, it, it seems like it'll, it might be kind of awkward now if, you know, if he goes back to just, you know, having, you know, like a, a short cameo now or then, because it seems like, you know, oh, you know, you know, why isn't he, you know, talking more or being more involved now that we've seen him kind of move beyond that role. So I just feel like he's in kind of a weird middle ground now where he's not really a cameo character, but it's kind of odd to see him be more of a main character. So he's kind of in the middle between being a background and a support character. Yeah. Yeah, my biggest my biggest thing with that was uh, just the beginning of the episode, you know, when they mentioned, hey, bulk biceps, or what, they kept saying his name, and it just felt really forced. Like, they wanted us to know who this character was straight up from the beginning, so they said his name as many times as possible. And it's weird. And he also doesn't really have, like, can you make a nickname up from bulk biceps? Like, you know, you have AJ... Or Rainbow. Hey, BB. BB, that's weird. I don't see them calling him that. <laughs> I, I think I'm just going to call him uh, Big McLarge Huge. <laughs> well, we, we could try the uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie route, and we could go uh, Double B. Double B. There we go. Uh, it's weird. It's just, he's an interesting character. He really is. We, 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 could, we could just call him Snowflake. Oh, my. Snowflake is good. We'll, we'll, we'll go with Snowflake. Just, you, you know, we, we love you, Private Stampede. Please don't hurt us. <laughs> and as we uh, finish up with um, the background ponies and, and support characters, I, I think, of course, uh, the major importance here is that we have noticed with all these episodes so far, there is a level of continuity that's going on with all of these episodes. You see references back from um, the gala. You see references from uh, Cloudsdale best young flyers competition you see a reference you know you know the, obviously when the wonderbolts are talking to rainbow dash you're seeing them communicate to her like oh yeah remember this happened as opposed to oh yeah uh, well yeah you know they remember who rainbow dash is and yet they still don't know who princess twilight sparkle is it's like that yeah that, me. That, that's pretty impressive i mean it just goes to show who the best pony is guys come on I, I want to drop one more thing before we move on from background characters is we forgot to touch on the Griffins and their appearance. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. They appeared. There were Griffins. They were there. Uh, we did not see Gilda return, but we did see some other Griffins. And I have a feeling we're going to be seeing more of them in future question game episodes since they obviously uh, qualified. Yeah. And, I, you know, one of the funny things that I, I really liked to seeing in the background was, you know, at the end of the episode when they when their team had qualified, you saw that team earlier. There even were a couple scenes where, you know, just you, you actually saw the team of Griffins just like flying in the background, which which I, I really thought was a just kind of a yeah. nice touch to, you know, maintain the fact that, you know, hey, you know, they're they're there. Details. It's spectacular. Yeah, it's it's not just details. It's also like like said, it's it's a level of continuity that you mm -hmm. you've seen carry over from several episodes and also continues in this episode, even for what's happening right then and there. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, in terms of continuity, uh, e even going, it, it kind of does tie into even kind of the season arc in two ways. Because I, right now they kind of have two different arcs going. They've got the equestrian games, which this episode very, very clearly ties into. And then also the whole mystery box uh, arc, which, I mean, at this point, I think it's pretty clear that, you know, especially after Rarity takes Manhattan, that the whole Rainbow Eye thing is you know, going to tie back into that. So it's like th this episode really kind of had continuity coming pretty much out its ears in, in pretty much every way it could possibly do it. Yep. A except for people not knowing who Princess Twilight Sparkle is. Well, we don't worry about her. <laughs> I think that what's really inside the box is actually just the collective conscience of Equestria that when Twilight Sparkle opens it, they're going to realize she's a princess. I, you know, I, as you said that, I'm thinking the exact same thing. I'm like, you know, yeah. That, that would actually make perfect sense. It's like the, it, the, the, the tree casts some sort of spell upon her and the entirety of Equestria that prevents anyone from acknowledging her princesshood. Oh, I don't know about going that far. I think it's more of a funny ha-ha, but realistically, I think we can, we can go back and just, you know, say what's in the box and, you know... Because, guys, seriously, I mean, for all we know, it could be what's inside the uh, the Ark of the Covenant, for all we know. 
Th- th- that would be a, a very gruesome end to the season. Anyway, um, I, I think the last thing that we've, uh, you know, going back slightly on the, uh, the rainbow eyes. I mean, we've already seen this twice. We've seen this in Rarity Takes uh, Manhattan, obviously, with the uh, rainbow-colored spool. And then we see it again here with Rainbow Dash, obviously, being given the lead pony badge from Spitfire. Maybe it does have to tie in again with uh, what we mentioned earlier of the elements of harmony reaffirming themselves as that element. I think that's where they're going with this, possibly. Right, that the elements of harmony were never just these gems, they were them. You know, the ponies themselves. Oh, yeah, absolutely, but I think that's, that's part of why you see them reaffirming themselves also, and, and having the rainbow eyes after they find that out. I mean, technically, the, the eyes and the whole thing, are, they're, it's not, they're not true rainbows. They're actually, it's because it's just the six colors, and it's the colors of yeah. the main six that make it up. Which is, to me, I mean, that, that, that's like the super sure sign that, you know, that this is purely all about, you know, the, it, it's entirely the elements of harmony. And it really, you know, it's what's going to, I think, tie everything together. It's just curious to see what is going to happen or, you know, basically where this is all leading up to. Well, no soon enough, I hope. I hope so. Okay, and uh, since we've kind of touched base uh, on quite a lot so far with this, uh, this review, I-, I think it's about time we should just wrap it up a little bit. What do you guys think? Let's do it. Yep, yep. So, uh, Krypton Logic, what would you have to uh, rate this episode for yourself? I mean, you being such a big Rainbow Dash fan. You know... <laughs> The only thing, the only thing this episode was missing was a Rainbow Dash song. Had it had a Rainbow Dash song, this episode would have fallen literally as my favorite episode of all time. Because it lacks a song, but makes up for it in practically everything else, uh, it definitely ranks on my top five episodes, five favorite episodes of the whole series, you know, seasons one through four. Uh, and if I was to give it like an actual rating uh, out of five, I would I would say uh, four point seven five out of five stars. <laughs> so why not just go out of ten? I would give it nine out of ten stars. Hey. Nine out of ten rainbows. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Reldan? You know, honestly, it I enjoyed this episode quite a bit. I, I would I still like. Some of the other episodes, even in season four, a little bit more. I mean, I do really enjoy Rainbow Dash as a character, but I mean, I don't know. It was a very strong episode. I would probably give it four out of five Apple Brown Bettys. <laughs> That's great. And as for me, uh, I, I would probably give it maybe a like a seven out of ten for me. Uh, only only reason I I'm probably ranking it a little bit lower. Uh, even even though I did thoroughly enjoy the episode, is you know e- even though I did say that you know you know the the decision of loyalty on Rainbow Dash was something that we've kind of seen again from the past. I I felt that it kind of had been brought up a, a little bit too forced. But then again, you you look at it from the perspective of having to choose between your friends and your idols. I, I mean, there there was a little bit of that. I, I did feel that the bulk biceps thing was just a teeny bit forced. I did enjoy the the humor that the character had to offer, but I did feel sometimes it was just a little lackluster. But what kept it up there for me was a lot of the humor, a lot of the the cameos from the other background characters we hadn't seen again, the, obviously the return of the Wonderbolts. And last but not least, yes, yeah, sure, you know, Seeing Derpy return as a character after being gone for quite some time, that was, that was a treat. And just being able to see, obviously, how well animated you know, she was during the entire episode. I think, again, it comes down to the humor and the comedy, you know, both uh, physical and being able to see it just down to the slapstick. And I think that's what made it for me. I agree. Yeah. So thank you guys for uh, tuning in to the uh, EFN Presents uh, review of episode 10 uh rainbow falls of season four uh i've been your host kiniro uh feeling in for ramble uh and been joined here by uh, krypton logic and reldan uh just want to say thank you guys for uh tuning in and thank you to both of you for helping out with this episode review yeah oh th- thank you for hosting yeah thanks for the opportunity anytime guys anytime